Welcome back, Sky Watchers, and happy December. That polar vortex may have you feeling some kind of way, but it is actually not winter just yet. At least not astronomically speaking. There's still a bit over a week between us and the December solstice. We will, however, be taking advantage of the clearer, colder skies for some excellent viewing opportunities. Let's transport outside and look up. We're here inside of the dome at the Danville Science Center, utilizing our newly upgraded Digistar 7 astronomy software to digitally remove the top of the dome. Doing so reveals a low but bright sun that is completely illuminating the far side of the moon, leaving the side that faces the Earth completely dim. Today's new moon guarantees no lunar light pollution will be present in tonight's sky, making it a perfect night for viewing. Transporting to shortly after sunset, we can spot the three-starred belt of Orion the Hunter rising in the east, beginning its dominance of the winter sky. If dark enough, you may spot the nearby red giant star Aldebaran and neighboring Taurus the Bull. In the shoulder of Taurus can be found the Pleiades star cluster, which we discovered in last month's void is a group of stars 444 light years away that contains some of the youngest stars visible with the naked eye. Brighter than all of these will be gas giant Jupiter, just to the right of Taurus. It continues its more than a month-long journey traveling within the bounds of Aries the Ram. We can follow the ecliptic into the west to discover mooned planet Saturn. I'm not calling it the ringed planet anymore because that's dumb. Mooned planet Saturn is touring within the bounds of Aquarius the Water Bearer. We can see the planets and the moon because they reflect the light of the sun. Solar reflection is also what allows us to spot spacecraft from a distance, spacecraft like the ISS. The International Space Station averages six complete Earth orbits every day. Traveling at 17,500 miles per hour means that if you do catch a glimpse of the ISS, it will be a brief one. The next time the space station will pass over Danville is this Thursday morning at 6.19 a.m. for a period of four minutes. It may be worth the early rise because if you do catch a glimpse of the ISS currently, then you may also spot another unique temporary skybound object, a tool bag. Last month, November the 2nd, my birthday, NASA astronauts Jasmine McBelly and Laurel O'Hara lost a tool bag while conducting a spacewalk. The crew lock bag is currently falling in orbit toward the Earth and will continue to do so over the next few months before being consumed by the Earth's atmosphere. The CLB is reflective with the visual magnitude of around 6, making it slightly dimmer than ice giant Uranus. So it can't be seen with just your eyes, but a set of binoculars or even a small telescope can currently view the bag's trajectory, traveling two to four minutes ahead of the space station. You can visit spotthestation.nasa.gov to get a list of ISS flybys for your location. So how could this happen? NASA and its members have a long history of preparedness and detail orientation. How could something as standard as a tool bag give astronauts the slip? Well, it's more common than you may think, and it gets weirder. July 20th, 1969. The Apollo 11 mission successfully places the first human on the moon. Neil Armstrong's words during the mission are some of the most famous ever recorded. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twin. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. The other main voice in those recordings, responding back to Armstrong from Mission Control, belongs to General Charlie Duke. Three years after the first moon landing, General Duke got his chance to walk on the lunar surface during the Apollo 16 mission. In 2016, Duke shared a story with Wired Magazine about how two days into the mission, Command Modular Pilot Ken Mattingly lost his wedding ring. It just floated off somewhere and none of us could find it, recalled Duke. They waited until the next day, no ring. They proceeded to orbit, land, and spend three days on the moon. Still no ring. On day nine of their 11-day mission, Matt and Lee went on a spacewalk to tend to an experiment tethered to their ship. Duke joined him. As they began their return to inside the ship, Duke noticed something small, glistening, and floating out the door. Duke reached out his glove, but missed. But as Duke continued to watch, the ring continued to travel until it hit Matt and Lee right in the back of the helmet, bounced back at 180 degrees in the opposite direction, and about three minutes later, 
Duke was this time successful in catching the ring, and Madden Lee was freed from a very sticky explanation to his spouse upon return home. Space exploration demands the highest degree of skill at engineering and math. But even when human operator error is taken out of the equation, things can go wrong. In February 2019, the Israeli nonprofit Space IL launched its small robotic lunar lander, Bereshit, from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Continuing efforts inspired by the Google Lunar X Prize, Bereshit would have been the first successfully privately initiated moon mission. It would have been. That is, except two months later, on April the 11th, as Bereshit made its approach to land on the moon, equipment failure and communication cutouts resulted in the lander crashing into the surface of the moon at a speed of 310 miles per hour. Aboard Bereshit famously was a capture containing thousands of tardigrades. Known for their hardiness, there is a chance, albeit a very unlikely chance, that some of these tardigrades have survived on the moon to this day. Less well-known, included in the payload of Space IL's lander, was a reported DVD's worth of secret technological innovations attributed to legendary magician David Copperfield. Copperfield worked with the Lunar Library and the Arch Mission Foundation to collect his secrets together to be delivered as part of the first commercial payload to the moon. Despite the crash, the Space IL team reports that it is very unlikely that the secrets were atomized in the impact. Strangely enough, Copperfield announced last month that this February, he will be performing a trick where he appears to make the moon disappear from the sky. We will surely be talking more about that then, so be sure to subscribe to follow that discussion. So far, everything left has been by accident. But what about things humans have intentionally left on the moon or in outer space? We all know that the lunar rover is still up there, as is a series of flags. Those golf balls famously hit are still up there too. But what is the weirdest thing humans have purposely left in space? Yep, poop and pee, 96 bags worth. Look, rocket fuel is expensive, really expensive. The more weight you have to transfer to and return back from space has an effect on the amount of fuel needed for a mission. The less weight a spacecraft has to return to Earth, the less fuel it needs to do so. By bagging and dumping their waste like you do after an eventful visit to the dog park, saves taxpayers millions of dollars. Further, these deposits have now spent 50 years on the moon. When astronauts return to the moon in 2025, they will have the opportunity to discover if any microorganisms in the waste had the ability to mutate in response to lunar conditions. Unfortunately, this is not the only tale of human genetic material left in space. Eugene Shoemaker is the founder of astrogeology, the field of astronomy that focuses on the geology of solid bodies in our solar system. Space rocks. He was really into space rocks. Studying the impact of dynamics of craters while obtaining his PhD from Princeton in 1960, Shoemaker became the first person to determine the origin of the Behringer Meteor Crater in Arizona. He was said to be the first geologist to walk on the moon. However, his diagnosis with Addison's disease disqualified him. Instead, he trained other astronauts, like Neil Armstrong, for their moonwalks, often serving as commentator beside Walter Cronkite during media coverage of those flights. He later started a systematic search for Earth orbit crossing asteroids, which led to the discovery of Apollo asteroids. In 1993, watching stars with his wife Carolyn, Shoemaker recognized what would become known as the Shoemaker Levy Comet, hitting Jupiter. This was the first time a comet planet collision had been witnessed by a human in recorded history. In 1997, while on a research expedition in Australia for more undiscovered impact craters, Shoemaker got into a fatal car crash. On July 31st, 1999, Eugene finally got to make his lunar expedition. Shoemaker's ashes were carried by the Lunar Prospector space probe and carried to the moon. His are still the only human ashes buried on the moon to date. While these items have been peculiar, we are not even beginning to scratch the surface. NASA keeps a catalog of an estimated 800 items left on the moon. $2 bills, a family photo, a feather? Want to learn more about the junk we've left in outer space? Then say so in a comment, and I'll put out a part two in the coming months. We hope you join us next month for the first Stream Into the Void of 2024, Tuesday, January the 9th. Thank you for watching, and keep discovering. Bye.